This is the Trump Breaking News Network. Here's what's happening. Judging Trump, Supreme Court choice on President-elect's immediate agenda. By Bill Mears. Voters chose Donald Trump, but now he hopes to return the favor with a looming far-reaching decision that could impact the lives of Americans on a range of hot-button issues for another generation. No longer a question of if, but whom and when, the next member of the U.S. Supreme Court will almost certainly be a conservative, and perhaps the first of several nominees who could cement this bench's current shaky right-leaning majority. Let the political parlor games begin. As the Trump transition team moves to first fill key cabinet and White House staff positions, parallel post-election focus on the high court vacancy has now started to coalesce, according to legal sources close to the vetting process. Some conservative advocacy groups have quietly suggested Trump signal before his inauguration who his pick would be, to jumpstart the Senate confirmation process, and allow the president to be to turn his attention to other first 100 days agenda items like immigration and the budget. But sources suggest a formal announcement only after January 20, when full input from the White House Counsel's Office and the Attorney General would occur, including FBI background checks of the finalists and eventual nominee. Trump has taken the unusual step of months ago publicly naming 21 individuals as potential nominees all but one sitting state or federal judges. I will pick only from that list, because they were a little concerned, because I was never a politician so maybe he'll go out and pick a liberal, okay? Trump told Fox News. That's not happening. Only from that list I'm going to pick, only? We're not going outside that list. Two names getting early attention from conservative legal activists are federal appeals court judges Diane Sykes of Wisconsin and William Pryor of Alabama. While the timing of the announcement is unclear, court watchers say whoever is chosen, will have a proven judicial record to please the right. This election is a massive game changer, as far as the Supreme Court is concerned, Thomas Dupree, a former Bush 43 Justice Department official, and a top appellate attorney told Fox News. When you look at the list of 21 individuals that is a great list, you are not going to go too far wrong choosing someone from that list. First of many? Liberal legal advocates had hoped a Hillary Clinton presidency would move the Supreme Court solidly to the left for the first time since the 1970s, but now admit the ideological status quo is preserved, likely to be strengthened. It does mean an entrenched conservative majority. But the real impact will be if there are more vacancies opening up in the next few years possibly Justice, Ruth Bader, Ginsburg, Justice Stephen, Breyer or, Justice Anthony, Kennedy, Elizabeth Wydra, President of the Constitutional Accountability Center, told Fox News Chief Legal Correspondent Shannon Breen. That majority could do things like overturn Roe v. Wade, the 1973 decision legalizing abortion. Those three justices will all be in their 80s by the end of the new president's first term. Short-handed and evenly split ideologically since the sudden death in February of Justice Antonin Scalia, the Supreme Court has moved gently into its new term, putting off consideration of some high-profile cases, presumably until its newest member is sworn in, something that may not happen until spring. Exit polls show 70% voters rated Supreme Court appointments as the most important or a major factor in their decision. And of those who identified it as a priority 56% voted in favor of Trump versus 41% for Clinton. Since Trump would be replacing one conservative with another, the needle does not move much ideologically, but that confirmation could serve as a template for bitter fights to come, if liberals Ginsburg and Breyer, and the moderate conservative swing vote Kennedy step down. Then all bets would be off. Proven records and reliability. The 21, as the list of potentials are known inside the Trump campaign are qualified jurists, but many were not on the political radar of the legal establishment, perhaps reflecting the GOP nominee's outsider persona. The list was culled with the aid of the Conservative Federalist Society and Heritage Foundation, but no one has yet emerged publicly as a favorite. Several of the judges have said they were not notified beforehand of their placement on the list. And one federal appeals court judge on the original Trump list told Fox News that since his name first appeared months ago, he has never been contacted for vetting nor has any of his colleagues who are also on the list. All eight current justices attended Harvard of Yale Law School and were seen as politically connected within Democratic or Republican legal circles. But as usual, reliable will be the benchmark for any finalist for the high court under a Trump presidency, following the blueprint of President George W. Bush. No surprises in the mold of Justices David Souter and John Paul Stevens, chosen by Republicans, but who carved a mostly liberal record. Conservative legal advocates advising the Trump forces have privately touted their favorites, and divided the selection scenarios into three categories. Proven conservatives who have been through a rigorous Senate confirmation, such as federal appeals court judges Neil Gorsuch, Raymond Kethledge, Stephen Colleton, and Thomas Hartman. Federal Judge Amal Thapar of Kentucky, who is of Indian descent, is also being discussed, perhaps for a future vacancy. 
state Supreme Court judges that would also offer a measure of geographic diversity. Joan Larson, from Michigan, who clerked for Scalia, Allison I, Colorado, David Striz, Minnesota, and Don Willett, Texas. A wild card like U.S. Senators Kelly A. Ott, who lost her New Hampshire re-election race, or Mike Lee, of Utah, who had backed Ted Cruz and revealed the protest presidential vote for Evan McMullen. The most intriguing surprise could be Senator Ted Cruz, Republican Texas, Trump's bitter primary opponent, who has only recently came around in his support of the nominee. Cruz, who clerked for former Chief Justice William Rehnquist, met privately with Trump on Tuesday. Other names not on the Trump list but long touted by Republicans include federal judges Brett Kavanaugh, Jeffrey Sutton, and Jennifer Elrod, and former Solicitor General Paul Clement. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he has some names he would offer the president-elect in coming days. A fantasy SCOTUS crowdsourcing poll launched this week to predict the nominee has Gorsuch and Pryor at the top, along with Cruz, Sykes, and Kath Ledge. All of those people are individuals who care very deeply about the rule of law and preservation of our Constitution, said Leonard Leo, executive vice president of the Federalist Society, who met personally Wednesday with Trump about the vacancy. He's looking for someone who's independent, courageous, smart, very high quality. Beyond the names, Trump himself campaigned with few specific criteria, but told CBS 60 Minutes in recent days he would appoint pro-life judges. And during one of the presidential debates he promised his picks will respect the Second Amendment and what it stands for, what it represents. About eight of the judges on the list of 21 appeared appearing at the Federalist Society's annual convention in Washington last week, appearing on panels and affirming their conservative benefits. Several told Fox News they were flattered to be considered for any high court vacancy, but refused to talk specifics about their qualifications or any vetting from the transition team. The convention mood was upbeat, as court watchers are all too aware Trump has the potential to remake the entire federal judiciary, as his two predecessors did. Notably, Presidents Bush and Obama placed two justices each on the high court. Options and Obstacles Senate Democrats, still stung by the unprecedented failure of the majority to allow a vote to Obama's choice of D.C.-based federal judge Merrick Garland to the high court, have some options to thwart the new president's pick. In 2013 while in the majority, they created the so-called nuclear option to block minority-led filibusters for any nominations except notably for the Supreme Court. Days before the 2016 election, when a Clinton victory looked promising, vice presidential candidate and Senator Tim Kaine suggested a Democratic Senate majority could expand the nuclear option to push through any Clinton high court nominee. But with the scenarios switched, Democrats will now have to decide if they can or want to filibuster, and Republicans will have to decide how to respond. Senator Charles Schumer, DNY, the next minority leader, was cautious over parliamentary ploys, saying just after the election, I hope we won't get to that. Such filibuster threats have rarely succeeded in recent years. Then Senator Obama supported a nascent effort to block the 2006 confirmation of Justice Samuel Alito. Yet some determined progressives say another option is in play, one that Obama himself controls, name Garland now to the Supreme Court in a recess appointment, arguing the Senate has abdicated its advice and consent constitutional authority by refusing to act on the pending nomination. Among supporters of this option, entertainer and liberal activist Barbara Streisand, who wrote on her Facebook page, if you are concerned about the Supreme Court, please consider going to this website and signing a petition asking President Obama to appoint Merrick Garland. And to add to the mischief, some progressives suggest a President Trump name his sister Marianne Trump Berry, a federal appeals court judge in Philadelphia on senior or semi-retired status. Her age, 79, and lack of overarching political philosophy have kept her out of the spotlight, something the intensely private judge probably appreciates. As for the show with handed High Court, Justice Ginsburg is the only member to comment publicly on the election results. There is an existing vacancy, and President Trump will fill it, she told a DC audience this week. Then, perhaps, Congress will do some work. One of the reasons why the court hasn't had as many petitions as usual is that there hasn't been any legislative activity. This has been the Trump Breaking News Network. Please subscribe and share to stay up to date on the latest news about our president. Be informed.